another edition of Carving Live, and today, working on this lady. Now, most of this woman, if not all of it, if I'm not mistaken, um, has been carved on a live stream that you can see, two live streams, and um, those are both available to see. But anyway, the point is, I'm gonna finish it up today. I'm gonna carve some flowers on it and uh, have some fun. This is Juniper, as the title suggests. suggests. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's that. Um, I'll let you guys tune in, give you a few moments to do that. Hopefully the internet's decent enough in here. I've had some router issues. not convinced. <clears throat> All right, well, either way, let me know if uh, things are breaking up or not working out, but it's a pretty hard wood juniper is to hand carve, and uh, it's very rewarding, however, because of the, the beautiful grain, and well, I can already tell right off the bat, I should have fixed this before I went on, but here we are with a bit of a loose piece of bark, piece of wood rather, on the uh, baseboard. Two screws holding this bad boy on, and uh, this bottom one needs to be tightened, so I'm just going to tighten that up quickly. Beautiful. I've got some spring clamps here. These are two-inch spring clamps that hold the uh, carving to the fixture board. And so my wife, my mom, mom stopped over, wife popped in, gave me some advice about this, said I needed flowers. And I resisted that. I said, uh, I said, nah, I don't need to do what they say. I get to do what I want. And then, and then this morning I woke up and looked at it. And I, and I said, yeah, it needs some flowers. So, <laughs> right. And so here we are. I'm going to do, do a little bit of uh, context carving, if you will, where I add some flowers to show people that it's a, a feminine portrait. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, just kind of make her a little bit more whimsical, a little bit more fun. I like that idea. Yeah, I mean, I could go all Medusa on her and carve some snakes in her hair, but I don't think that's the that's the move for this one. So, so I'm gonna start by blocking in the the petals and uh, do my best to get some floral elements to this carving. So. Real quick, before we move on, this live stream is, uh, if you, if you want to say sponsored, you can say it. It's sponsored by my school, and I've got a link in the description below. If you want to learn how to carve faces like this, check that out. It's Cyber Monday today, and 30% uh, off at the time of posting this. So if you're watching this on Monday, the Monday after Thanksgiving, was that November uh, 27th, then... You can get 30% off. <laughs> How's that for a, a killer opening? <laughs> but per usual, I appreciate the support, the likes, the comments. I'm still trying to gauge if, I, uh, if it's worthwhile doing the live streams. I enjoy it. But, um, you know, I could easily be making this into a different form of content. And uh, so the likes, the shares, the stuff make it worthwhile and i appreciate that so encourage me to keep doing it and that helps the metrics and gets the video out there and makes it almost worthwhile in terms of the financial part of it otherwise it's just fun i, I like the live stream i mean i want to keep doing the live stream because the, the social element is really nice i like i like being able to have a little bit of a, a back and forth with you guys. Probably can't hear me over the over the pounding, but I like the back and forth element. I like being able to talk to you guys. So. Yeah, appreciate that support. It's Monday, and it's snowing here in Michigan, in the states, and uh, I don't mind it. I like the what the, the snow. I like I like the. The weather we get here in the winter, I'm a big fan. So I'm going to start with a small little 
flower at the base here. I'm just outlining it here. Hey, Igor, I think that's how you pronounce that. Hopefully I'm not wrong. Yeah, so feel free. I'd love to have a conversation if you have any thoughts on what you want to talk about. This is a very hard wood, as you can see. And uh, it's... You know, pretty dry, that's also part of it. Can't divide this up into five petals. Finished my second green man today using some screenshots from one of your vids as a guideline. Cool. I appreciate that. You shared it with me at least. I appreciate that you're uh, getting after it. And glad the carving video helped. <laughs> All right can see here hello from uh the united states to you in russia uh, yeah comments i'm reading the comments by the way i'm not just randomly saying hi to the people who are supposedly in russia this is a live stream so if you're catching this live most of you won't sadly um but uh you are watching live right now Free to comment below, and even if you're not watching live, um, feel free to post a comment or a question below. I'll try to get to it. It is hard sometimes to do, which is why this is a great format. If you have any questions or comments for me, to get a hold, uh, because it, yeah, it's just especially when you're really getting after the shorts. There's just uh, it's a lot of a lot of content going out and a lot of uh, comments coming in and. Sometimes a little bit challenging to respond to people, and so I appreciate the uh, appreciate the comments here because it allows me to uh, answer questions and talk to folks on here. Yeah, tips on carving a female face. Yeah, it's really a it's kind of a, a it's a bit of a misconception that female faces are necessarily harder to carve than male. I think if there is any truth to that, it's that female faces on the whole tend to have a completely, a, a fairly different, let's say fairly different um, symmetry. And um, there are features that vary from males that uh, most people don't understand. And so that and also the fact that there's more fat or adipose tissue in the face on the female and and some of the landmarks, such as the deep lines in the mid-face groove here, or the frown, or the smile lines, or the nasolabial folds, as they're called, those lines are a little bit less obvious in many cases. And, and so what, what that means is, because of that rounder, softer appearance, it's harder to figure out the distances of things from one another. Everything is smooth, and it's, you know, harder to determine what's going on. And so, you know, with... With craggy old faces, you have these deep fissured uh, lines that are measurable. And with females, they're a lot more abstract so and, and more smooth. So yeah, that, that, that's probably one of the presenting difficulties that, or some of the most challenging aspects of the female face is capturing the softness. 
And so kind of brings me to a tip that I would suggest if you're starting out in carving, you invest in some uh, rifflers. Rifflers are great. Rifflers are essentially a type of file. Um, Cuts all makes uh, some, and I'll, I'll try to link these in future videos because I do like these. Um, it's basically a, a cutting rasp, you know, like a file again, but just more aggressive. They make a few different kinds, and that's what I used on this face to smooth it out in combination with sandpaper. So the purpose of the riffler is to smooth out material a lot more quickly. The sandpaper is a lot more helpful to uh, refine those, get, get rid of the, the heavy lines that the, the riffler or the rasp cuts into the wood grain. So you want it to be smooth. You don't want it to look too rough. Um, and so, yeah, I use a combination of those things. But there are, again, a whole bunch of rules about symmetry of the female face and um, the types of features, the elongation or sh shortening of certain elements of the face that uh, I could get into, but that's kind of a whole nother talk. Um, I do go into depth about that in my book, which is coming out shortly. Um, but yeah, just to summarize some of it, just a real quick summarization of it. Um, the, you know, some, some of the features include the brow ridge in relationship to the nose. So female faces tend to have a slightly more Y-shaped brow ridge. And this information came to me through um, Vic Hood, which I recommend you check him out if you haven't. He's a great teacher of carving, but uh, what that means is the bridge of the nose meets the brow ridge in a Y fa fashion, whereas the male brow, as the nose bridge meets the brow ridge, it's more of a T. And so it's more straight across on the male, heavier brow. The female has a less protruding brow. That's from the side profile. So if I bring the camera over here and we look at the side view of her, it's going to be a little bit flatter, generally speaking, not quite as much of an angle. All right, that's kind of basically, uh, you know, the gist of, of, of the brow ridge differences. There's more to that, but another kind of typical thing is the female face tends to be um, a lot less heavy on the lower half. So what that means is there's a lot less material existing in terms of width and, and depth, length, all of that down from the nose lower. So typically tends to be more round, less square angular and tends to narrow or taper a little bit more quickly as the chin moves down from the cheek, you know, so from the cheek on down to the, to the base of the chin, it's going to be narrower. Right? It's another characteristic female feature. The lips tend to be slightly more prominent, more full. The chin again, less broad, less square, more rounded. Uh, you know, I mean, the list goes on. The nose is typically slightly smaller, more narrow, shorter, Although there are exceptions to that as well. So yeah, these are some of the differences. But yeah, I go into a lot more depth uh, in my online school, which is Fundamentals of Wood Carving. Uh, that's linked below in the description here. You can catch those project videos, tons and tons of information in those. I mean, I've got like a three hour plus video um, on carving. Uh, this lady here is probably one of my most requested uh, carvings in terms of like people asking about, you know, how I did it. So this is completely up online on the school, the fundamentals of wood carving in the link below. And that's uh 30% off. So you can get access to a year's worth of, uh, content, 80 plus project videos. And I add more every month for less, much less than the price of one of my classes. So in person, so that's on sale as well today. So that's cyber Monday, but there's the shameless plug. I have no shame. <laughs> Speaking of trying to make a living, one of the questions is, um, do you have any suggestions for how to price carvings for extra income? Uh, yeah, that's a really tough question because everyone's carvings are different and therefore their pricing is different. And so, you know, I, I, it'd be easy for me just to say, price up, price up, make the prices higher. But it's not so simple and it's not necessarily fair to your customers. You have to um, gauge the, you know, the, the desire that people have for your artwork, the time that you put into your artwork, all these factors that you kind of already consider when you're pricing something. Uh, in addition, uh, what, what is it that you think about the car ring? For me, that's one of the questions that most people don't ask themselves when they're pricing is like, how satisfied am I with this carving? Right? It, it's as simple as 
a one hour carving can be worth 10 times more than a 10 hour carving simply because I absolutely love the way it turned out. If I love the way it turned out, it's likely other people will really appreciate the project and appreciate what it went into it and, you know, how the stars aligned, if you will, to make this thing beautiful. And so it's more to do, when I'm pricing at least, this is just my take on it, with how satisfied I am with the end result. A lot less to do with the time invested, less to do with the material, and even less to do with the size. It's more just, how do I like this piece? It's subjective, you know? And so that way you never feel cheated out of a carving. If you really love something, um, you should price it so that it feels worthwhile for you to sell. That's it. That's my, my number one tip on pricing. Uh, of course, there's more into it. I'm a business student. I studied business for a while in school, and I appreciated uh, learning some of that stuff. But it all boils down to, to that. And there's, of course, more to it, but that's that. Flipper says, what name did you just say? Um, I'm assuming that you're talking about the school. Uh, that's in the description of this video, but it's just... Um, here, I'll write it down really quick. AlecLacasse.com. It's in the link below, but just in case you, you uh, are technolo technologically challenged, here it is. AlecLacasse.com. Okay, there it is. That's the website. There's my finger. Happy holidays, Rick. Where do you get the bark that you carve specifically for the thicker ones? Um, well, this, obviously this is not bark. I, th I think most of you know that based on looking at it, but in case you don't, it's juniper. This is um, what most people think of as Western red cedar. Anyway, the cottonwood bark that I get, most of it, I find. So I take trips with my friends and family out west and uh, have I taken family yet? Oh, I'm lying. I haven't. Mostly friends. And so I collect the material out west, Montana, Wyoming, uh, even as far as Idaho. And, uh, of course, I live in Michigan, so that's, you know, 24-hour-plus drive for me. And so there's a lot of commitment to uh, the material to, to do that. Is, uh, it's a whole thing. So uh, I look for these downed cottonwood trees. They're called bones. And uh, you have to hunt on public access. Fishing uh, access our, our points are great. And you have to collect the fallen material. You can't go chopping down trees for bark. It just doesn't work that way. So when people ask me if my wood is sustainably sourced, I say, yeah, it is. We're not um, cutting down trees. We're collecting bark from already dead, dying trees, right? That's the only bark that you can really get off of a tree anyway. Bark really likes to stay on trees that are living. So it's kind of a, actually a little bit of an ignorant comment. No, no offense, but uh, to, but you know, how can you expect these people to know about, about that? So not, not your question. I'm saying that the, the assumption that I'm peeling this away from living trees, that's the ignorant uh, concern, I guess. But uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate the concern. I think people should, um, should be questioning that when you're talking about sustainability. So anyway, um, the name of the person you recommended. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, my bad. Um, the name of the person I recommended is Vic Hood. Vic Hood is a, uh, you know, I don't know if he has a lot of online stuff right now. We, we've got some content we filmed of Vic, and I've got an editor working on that to, to put out in tandem. Uh, we'll put that on the website uh, to purchase his class. But um, if you can take a class with Vic, I just, I can't recommend it enough. I mean, aside from being a wellspring of knowledge, he's just one of the, the, the sweetest and most uh, interesting people. And one of the most fantastic storytellers. But... Um, Vic Hood, V-I-C, last name, H-O-O-D. All right, so we threw a flower on there. Thanks, Rick. Am I missing any comments here? Questions? I was able to sell six, oh, to buy six pieces of bark for $100. Shipping is expensive. Yeah, I mean, that is expensive, but yeah, bark is expensive. 
really it's not that terrible. I mean, I mean, I, I spend at least that when I've had to purchase bark, say I run low on some of the materials I've found and I have to buy it. It is expensive to buy. All right. So on top of having this juniper resist the tools as hard as dry, I'm carving into the end grill. And so that's making it even more challenging to carve, but uh, so that's why I'm using a mallet. up here. Excuse my hand. The worst injury you've ever received while carving is the question posed. Um, I'm pretty careful. I don't get injured a lot. Although, I've had issues with my uh, shoulder. I've had to get shots for steroid steroid shots in my arm to strengthen it from overuse from hand carving um maple you know large large scale maple carving we're talking like i don't know three or four times life-size busts and just working long hours and lifting heavy weights on top of it and not giving myself enough break so shoulder injury is probably the worst of them in terms of the long lasting ones that have impacted my day to day uh, but you know, I mean, the stitches from the chainsaws and all that, that's, that's always a part of it. Well, it, it was a lot more when I was younger and less careful, but you know, many of those injuries were injuries of ignorance from being, you know, a little bit too excited as a younger person. So thankfully I've been able to avoid a lot of those problems. Yeah. Rick is saying he notices it's way harder to work with. It is. Yeah. 
That it is. It's just a lot slower to carve, so it slows you down though. She doesn't be kind of a nice thing to take a deep breath and enjoy a project a little bit more because of the pacing. Pacing slows down. These pedals are asymmetrical. Uh, Jason just uh, slashed his thumb pretty badly on Saturday, just below a thumb guard. Ooh, no hospital visit. Good. Jason, he said he just signed up for my online class. Looking forward to it once my thumb heals up. All right, Jason, the journey begins. Yes, and look forward to uh, look forward to new new projects every month. We're we're working on uh, this Thursday our next project, Sam and I, and I look forward to bringing that to you guys. But yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free and hop on over to that Facebook group if you're on Facebook for the uh, for the help in the community. I give uh, illustrated design drawing, you know, feedback based on your request on that page as well. So if you have questions, you can pose those questions to me if you want. That's part of the deal. Which, um, just a heads up, that service um, is going to be run by someone other than me in the near future because I, I can't keep track of everyone. Uh, as the school continues to grow. For now, I can do it. But, um, so a lot of really skilled carvers on there now who have been just mind-blowingly good and really helpful and giving others feedback as well. So there's that, which is great. So, grateful for them. Grateful for the community that's come out of this, uh, this uh, online school. I, I didn't really... Think about that aspect of it. I, I mean, I, I thought about it, but I, I didn't know how it would turn out. And so it's cool to see, it's cool to see that that's flourishing. Jason uh, is at a beginner level, cool. Bought some gouges on Saturday. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so we've got a couple of flowers punched in, roughly. I'm going to bring the backgrounds into the background. <laughs> Told you it's hardwood. Rarely does a clamp ever come off of a fixture. Robert Statlander is a good carver, Rick says. Yeah, I agree. Statlanders are great carvers. I've met Robert before. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not getting one of the brothers confused or the family, but he's an amazing carver. I actually judged an, on an art show um, and gave him an award at uh, oh, Solder Village, was it? In Ohio. It was a carving show, excuse me. An art show. Same difference, but. This was a while back. This was a couple of years ago during COVID. But I was, uh, very impressed. It was my first time seeing his work, and he is just a legend of carving for sure. The detail, I mean, it's just amazing. Really amazing carver. Did you have a design in mind, or was this freehand? Hey, Richard. Oh no, yeah, no, no design in mind, really. Um, We were just talking about you, though, uh, Richard. Doug was showing me one of the, car the carvings that he has from you, and uh, just awesome, man. Just amazing, amazing work.
check out Richard Holden, guys, if you haven't, and you're into you're into character carving. Uh, he's a fantastic, amazing character carver. Uh, does some really, really great work. This is such a peculiar carving. I'm happy with it, but it's uh, it's, it's just not at all what I expected. You know, I knew it would be a female face, um, and I knew it would kind of have this curve to it. But yeah, it's interesting how things turn out sometimes a little bit differently than you expect. It's kind of the beauty of this, though, in a sense. that so much of it can be left to all of the factors that play into carving, you know, the material, the, the mood that you're in, the decisions that you happen to make at the, at the time you're carving it. There are some producers that believe that songs are best made in one sitting, and um, best written, and in some cases even best produced in one sitting, and there are some sculptors who tend to think that way as well, that you might as well get the thought out right away. And while I don't necessarily subscribe to that, I do find that the carvings that just come out all in one session can be really interesting. And, you know, of course, they're going to be smaller carvings generally or less involved because how much can you really get in a day? How much done can you get in a day? Um, but there's something to be said for completing a thought. It's a slow moving carving, isn't it? We just spent the last half hour carving in two, uh, two flowers. Thank you, Amin. Um, yeah, Rick is uh, acknowledging Richard um, being a great carver, which I agree with. Um, Amin asked if I carve women and if I uh, receive a photo, how much will it cost? Yep, well, you can DM me, Amin. Uh, but yeah, I do, I do do commission. So you can go through my website, uh, which is linked in the description. If you go to my school page, uh, on the top there, you'll see contact and you can send me a little message there and I can give you information about pricing and all that stuff. carving upside down to get better access to that top log. Yeah, of course, Richard. It's not kind, it's just honest.
This is good prep for that uh, video I hope to be putting out here shortly, which is carving the hardest wood in the world. <laughs> of course, this is nowhere near that, but it will be good practice. me now. All right, just got one more flower to knock in here, thinking, uh, let's see, I'm going to put it right side up and try and decide where to put it. The bottom of the top, huh? Uh, I don't know what finish I'll apply to this, Richard. I'm not sure yet, to be honest. But Adding color maybe to the flowers. Will I add color to the flowers? No. Thank you. I appreciate it. Definitely not on Juniper. Um, no chance. Maybe if this were basswood, I would consider it. Um, you know, but even then, you know, I'm not a big fan of painting these type of carvings, personally. I th that might change in the future, it probably will, it could change, who knows, but uh, it's, it's just not something that, uh, you know, I, lo I love the, the wood grain coming through, so, especially on this. <laughs> what do we do? I think we should throw some hair down here. And if there is hair coming down here, I think if we have another flower, it should just be peeking out from behind this one. And uh, just gonna set that out, outline that. Try to stay out of the way of the camera here. I have to move it. I don't know what finish. I'll probably use a poly, Richard. Uh, I'll probably use, uh, like a dead flat poly on it. Maybe you can have the flower coming out. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Decisions. Decisions, huh?
Let's see, think, think, think. What to do? How about up here? That is just rock hard wood. Rock hard wood. Can lower this a bit, make it easier to access harder on the shoulders when you have to reach up really high. And I often forget that, and so because the trade-off is that it's harder to see when it's down low. <clears throat> The other issue with this is it's moving so much on this board. There's not a lot of surface area for it to sit on. Thanks. Oh, cool. Yeah. Boots, Bootsuljia. I don't know how to say that. It says that they're, uh, he set up my carving stand and was working with the uh, piece as files, I'm assuming he means the rifflers. Oh, files. Haven't gotten the riffler. Okay. What's next says, how is it secured to your board? Seems to be bouncing a bit on the top. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's just screwed on. And it's, it is moving up. That's uh, quite a bit more than I'd like it to. And I could probably fix it up, but... No. You know, there's just not a lot of material back here. Flat stock for it to mount to. So... Being that it's just screwed in, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. Ha ha, how about that? <laughs> You're gonna have to glue that back in. Get some glue in there. Not so much. You know, I'm doing a repair like this laid into carving. I don't want uh, to seep out of, this, of the top too much because then I'll have to do a bunch of cleanup work. Well, I just, have, I, I just finished my third Santa after watching your knife only video. A lot of great tips, but mine all look like Santa in June. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Um, says here, I'm glad to see you're having issues because I thought it was just me using the tools wrong. Yeah, well, yeah, wood is wood and behaves the way it wants to sometimes. So don't be too hard on yourself.
<laughs> what did I just spray on there to make it stick? Oh, yeah, it's just an accelerant. I think I have it linked in the description, uh, like an affiliate link, but it should be down there, yeah. Makes the glue dry instantly, and so you don't have to wait for the, even the super glue kicks in. It can take a minute or so to dry, but this makes it so that you can cart it right away. And that's nice when you're, you know, impatient like me, or you're making a live stream video. <laughs> you don't want to waste a minute of everyone's time watching your glue dry. breathing hard this is a uh, pretty pretty good exercise yeah it works with super with uh, super glue at any point would you put anything behind the top of the face to reinforce that area um no not in this case no it's it's pretty it's pretty sturdy I mean it has enough material on it to uh, support it what is hard with wood this hard, how often do you need to hone or sharpen tools? Um, I will sharpen these tools as soon as I'm done with this project. So I will I will need to sharpen it pretty soon. Is the you know is the, is the point? So um, you know even I might even if one tool is damaged, you know if I didn't have so many tools to replace it with mid project, I might have to sharpen midway through. Uh, but again, being that I've got a lot of different, I've got you know a lot of multiples of the same tool that allows me to keep working. I don't necessarily stop to sharpen, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, worth stopping, take a break, get your tool sharp. Yeah, I've said it before in previous live streams with this wood. This is much better suited to Dremel carving. I just um, have so little desire to do that anymore because of the dust. And, and I just love having a shop that is fairly easy to clean. And wood chips on the floor and a little bit of dust here and there is much nicer to deal with than, you know, dust everywhere. And uh, that's what the Dremel gets you, so... Yeah, it's a difficult wood to hand carve, no doubt. This would not be the material that I would recommend people start out with, uh, you know, to hand carve. All right, let's hoist this guy up. Let's see how uh, she looks. Pretty good. What do I sharpen with? Um, I have a number of different tools that uh, I have a video on in the, in the description. Uh, not in the description, I lied. In, in my uh, YouTube videos, if you search my name and uh, sharpening, I've got a pretty straightforward video there, maybe a little bit longer, but uh, kind of describes the tools that I use, the process. I don't want to get into that now because it'd be a little bit of a distraction, but. 
but absolutely uh, check that out. And uh, I'll just I'll say the tool is called the WorkSharp 3000, and uh, it's it's a nice tool. I like it a lot. Uh, it's a disc, spinning disc, glass uh, disc that has sandpaper that you can mount to it, and that will actually um, prevent the tools from heating up a little too much. Spins at a slow pace and the glass absorbs the extra heat. So that really helps as well. And Coming up above the lips, getting a little bit more separation in those lips. This is kind of a peculiar um, face in that it just doesn't exhibit all of the classical, you know, signs of the female face, and you know it's a little bit atypical or maybe. stereotypically feminine features, but I don't think it's, I think it's kind of weird if all of the pieces that you carve are, you know, perfect model, you know, features where everything is exactly the way that you would expect in the classic example of the female. It's like carve some normal people too, right? Even though she's, you know, she's pretty and uh, interesting. <laughs> Top flower. You were speaking on it briefly the last live. What was I speaking on? I'm not sure what these comments are meaning, guys. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not sure what the heck you're talking about. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what, this wood is not for the faint of heart. If you're a carver out there and you're uh, trying to take after and get some good insight as to what woods to buy for hand carving, don't buy juniper. Don't buy juniper unless you're into power carving, in which case definitely buy juniper. Start with something a little easier to work with. That's what I would say, but I can't stop you guys. A lot of you're gonna just get it anyway. You're gonna buy the you're gonna buy the juniper because you like the way it looks. And uh, I mean how the heck can I blame you? I'm over here carving it right now, so I can't be angry at you. I'm making the same mistakes you are putting all this time into a really, really challenging wood to carve all just because you're too stubborn to use power tools. Yes, flower, flower, flower. The comments say flower. What about it? <laughs> person is saying flower. <laughs>
こなってますね。All right, well, I'm pretty close to calling this one, guys. And that was the goal for this video, is to try and get as close as possible to buttoning her up. Lower hair to the lower portion. Portion, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder, Richard. Got my back. Let's add some hair down there, huh? Glory to God. This is some hard wood. And the tools go down. I'm going to pull away from here, which actually is a really insightful side profile shot. I need to take some material down here. Oh, very helpful. With the wood this flaky. You have to take your time. I cannot rush it. You're going to make mistakes. Pieces of wood are going to come off that you don't want to come off. You're going to have a lot less fun. And you ought to have
but I might have attempted to grab a Dremel. Ever carved walnut? Beautiful wood, but I imagine it can't be too carved. Fun to carve. I'd take walnut over this. I would. Wal walnut is probably a little softer than this particular piece of wood. I, I don't say juniper on the whole, but in this case. In fact, it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit in here. I'm warming up and this sweater has to come off. It's a good feeling. So a lot of juniper carving going on today. Uh, between this project and the life-size bust I'm finishing up, we've got a customer coming by tomorrow to come look at his piece. So I'll have a, I'll have a busy afternoon, busy evening working on um, that bust. So you can see more of what I'm doing. Yeah, um, the question is, do you ever do power carving? Do you prefer one over the other? Yes, I, I do power carving. And uh, I like both. I would say if I could only do one, there's no contest. Uh, I'd much rather do hand carving. I mean, it's just, it's much more relaxing. Um, it's my first love when it comes to carving. I mean, the power carving though is high octane. It's fun, it's, it feels fast paced, feels high energy, but um, it's a different experience altogether. So I wouldn't say that it replaces hand carving for me, uh, but it's certainly Really good time. And I spend a fair amount of my time doing that now. And because of the larger commissions that I take, many of them start out with chainsaw and they're finished with uh, hand tools, but they're always roughed in with manner multiple uh, types of power. And so it makes a difference. Let's tie some of the hair down into this piece here. This is bow's wood anyway. Let me just break up that hard saw edge. I don't know if, can you see it in the frame? Yeah, down there. Almost looks like a beautiful genie. Ha! <laughs> can see that. Thanks, Michael. Jason, thanks, appreciate it.
Uh, thanks for all you're doing for the woodcarving community. Thank you, Dale. Glenn, yep, 100% agree. Always use a Dremel. Yep, dirty and need a mask and noisy. I was able to carve all three Santa carvings right in my family room while stirring in my lounge chair. That's great, Glenn. That's so cool. Yeah, that's a happy, that's a happy story. Isn't that great? You can do it. I mean, I try to te te you know, treat the shop like, um, you know... an indoor environment that, that I want to maintain and keep clean and so you know just the quality of life it's, it's not it's not about being particular it's about decent health you shouldn't be you know living in a, a dust bowl all day it's not good for you so yeah so it is, it is great to have challenging is because the wood moves so much on the fixture and it's about to come off actually so I'm gonna call this good pretty shortly do some refining a little sanding Kind of fun, kind of fun. Yeah, I like uh, I like the softness in her face and then the roughness of the wood. And then I want the flowers to be a little bit softer as well to match. So I'm gonna bring some rifflers into this story. Good day, Matt. I was saying that the flowers should go on top before you decided. Now I feel bad it chipped out. Ah. Mm-hmm. No, I feel bad. It chipped out. Laugh out loud. Yeah, that looks like an extreme workout. You were really working hard compared to the other day. Right. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Have a little, have a little extra coffee for this one. That's for sure. Okay, so where is that riffler, huh? What did you guys do with my riffler? <laughs> See, I'm forever losing my riffler. It's so small and delicate and uh, missable. My hope is that I don't end up sweeping it into a pile of dust and uh, throw it into the trash bin. That'd be bad. That's something that I could see myself doing though. Okay, well, on with it, huh? Let's get with uh, get with a little. Cuts all riffler. Might be a bit aggressive to such small details. So, but it at least gives us a starting point. Take some of the high points off. It's all right. 
That is all right. It's pretty impressive actually how this tool works. It, uh, it smooths nicely. In fact, I like the lines that it's leaving behind. I may not, I may not try and work myself to sand these out. Maybe just a touch of finer sandpaper to make it appear a little more velvety. But I like the little lines. Let's see if I can get close up on that. See the little lines I'm carving into that? Yeah, well, get the whole thing in frame, or at least part of it. I like that. Don't you? I don't like that I just asked you what you think. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> in that puppy, huh? It looks like almost like a little hibiscus the way the lines portray themselves. Definitely going to leave those in. Happy accident, huh? Happy accident. This tool produces some dust, but much, much less dust than a riffler or a file. And let me say, if I was carving this outside, I would not hesitate to pull, pull out the, the power tools. I would not hesitate to pull out the Dremel. Uh, you know, because I'm already outside, you know, on a bigger project, I, would, I wouldn't hesitate. Or the die grinder. But because I'm inside, I like, you know, and I like the control of the hand tools as well. So, you know, it's got that going for it, but I just don't, I don't care for the mess. I just do not care for it. Okay, sorry, I'm working on the wrong a part that you can't see. Love the texture of the flower. Thanks, Richard and uh, G Taz. What the dimensions are for my workshop? Jealous seeing your skylight while I'm carving in my basement. Um, uh, cool to see how the glued piece didn't affect your ability to go right back at it. Cool. Yeah. Um, dimensions are 12 foot by 16 foot, so very small. And uh, uh, thanks. I'm glad you liked the skylight. Um, but, uh, you know, I worked in a dark windowless garage for many years. So, and, you know, as a student in college, I would draw pictures of my dream shop. And this is driving me nuts. And so, you know, this was in my head for a long time. And uh, luckily, I found... Uh, I found someone who helped me to do it. Could not have done it without my buddy John Bertolini and his daughter and grandkids who helped me with it. And my father, my mother, my, I don't know what my mother, my mom helped? I can't remember. I'm sure she wanted to, but she didn't. But, um, you know, and friends, Alex Wilkinson, good buddies came by. Got Anthony Bizzotto painted the place and um, just a lot of help from friends and anyway so yeah it was a, it was a pretty time consuming little project this uh shop was but it was worthwhile because like uh like you say i've got a space that i can really enjoy and that's dedicated separate from the house and uh i don't have to drive to get to it so it's a nice thing it's a huge blessing and i don't i i maybe i do take it for granted but i try not to and this is a good reminder not to so I do feel very blessed uh, to have it. Very excited to, to work so close to the home so I don't have to break for lunch and drive anywhere. 
But, uh, but you know, we all make these sacrifices so that we can have things like this in the future. Um, and the sacrifice that I made was working in a garage, a dark garage. And, um, you know, that was the price I paid. I did that for, I don't know, I don't know 15 years, 14 years. Hopefully you can hear me talking. I know with the live streams, I get quiet. So, and then I, I get quiet. I'm a quiet talker sometimes. So I have to remember that, but just yell at me if you can't hear me. Most of you are content to not hear me, I'm sure. Okay, well, getting off the close. Gotta cut the eyebrows in. This is a long, long live stream. I get carried away with these sometimes, so. I'm getting a little extra more than I usually give in terms of uh, time on this thing. That's good, glad to hear it's uh, Soothing to watch. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Richard.
The beautiful thing too about Juniper is it handles so well um, with uh, sandpaper and uh, handles, it, it takes well to Riffler's rasp, sandpaper, carbide cutting heads, all that stuff, even though, again, what we're doing here is all hand carving. The rest of this project has been carved, the entirety of the project has been carved on previous live stream videos, so you can catch it there. Kind of one of the first projects I've ever done, I think. One of the few I've actually done completely on YouTube, which is kind of fun for me. I don't usually do that. A little adventure to share with you. So thanks for tuning in. If you watched these all, wow, power to you. Hope you enjoyed them. And for the rest of you who are kind of scrubbing along through as you watch them. Um, in the future, no longer live. I hope you enjoyed. Hope it soothed you. Hope you feel relaxed and you give carving a shot one day. I'd love to see more people try this fantastic and beautiful art form. It's not well explored enough, I think. Certainly not in the fine art realm. Grateful, grateful that uh, so many of you have shown up to support what I do and to help keep me going. I so appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I've gone this far. I might as well, I might as well give you the treat of seeing it clear coated because I think that's such a, a wonderful experience, uh, especially with Juniper that I've 
I'd like to share it with you. So let's uh, not delay too much more here. As much as I could carve this thing for an eternity. I think it's looking good. I'm going to uh, make a couple of final touch-ups and uh, move to the clear coat. So we can do that quickly together. And uh, make, call this one finished piece. Put those nostrils in. Which I think makes a difference. Seeing those guys cut in. Clean it up. A bit more sandpaper. Oh, good. Happy to hear that, guys. Um, folks, giving back some nice feedback. And appreciate it. G, uh, let's see, G Taz Devil says he's been getting back into carving. And the videos are nice to tune into at work, inspire to create. Uh, after work instead of melting to a puddle. That's really probably the coolest thing I could hear anyone say, so I appreciate that. That's a good part of the reason that I enjoy doing this, so. Um. And uh, Dow says that I uh, appreciate uh, me letting everyone sit in on it, so. Thanks a lot. Yeah. My pleasure. So. Hopefully you don't work as a bus driver or a uh, pilot or something that requires full attention um, because I don't want to be responsible for uh, anyone watching this while they're on the job and uh, endangering the lives of uh, passengers. <laughs> but, uh, I appreciate the comments. All right, guys, let's put some clear coat on it. Let's just do it. Why not? Pull it up under that chin before we get to it. Peculiar little card.
Clear your coat. Dust. And then put the finish on. Yeah, it's uh, general finishes, clear poly, dead flat. That's what I'm experimenting with lately. And it has a really nice uh, dull luster once it's uh, dry, which I like a lot. So I'll take off any excess here. So you got to get that back on so things dry out nicely. But otherwise, yeah, the grain will pop. And uh, as it dries, it'll look a lot less uh, kind of glossy. But it, it's, a, it's a beautiful wood and uh, a nice finish. Thanks, Dal. Thanks, guys. Thanks, all of you, for tuning in. This has been a lot of fun for me. It's been, uh, wow, like uh, over an hour and a half. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, once again, today is the last day. Uh, thanks, Greg, for uh, th to get access to the school uh, for 50% uh, off. Or I wish it was 50% off. Uh, for your sake, 30% off. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, in fact, uh, in the comments below, I'll, uh, I'll give you guys for watching this video 50% off the school. 
<laughs> about that. It's probably a mistake, but uh, since you're watching, if you're interested in carving, I'll put it in the description below for the rest of the day. It's Cyber Monday, and uh, it's kind of the biggest, biggest deal for those of us who sell things online. Since I have an online school for carving faces, I'll put that below. And there's my gimmick. <laughs> I misspoke, and I'm going to follow through. I'll comment a code in the, in the comment section of this video as soon as I hang up. And uh, I'll go create that and give you a half off the school. So <laughs> if you've been trying to sign up, there it is. Okay, anyway, thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. And uh, God bless all of you. And uh, enjoy the holidays, Christmas and New Year. Okay.